Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the first edition of um, 360 degree perspectives. This is something new that we're doing at the Microinsurance Center at Milliman, and it's intended to be a series of short conversations that help us all to think about some of the key issues that we have in microinsurance now. Um, in this first edition, we've invited our good friend, uh, Bert Optibek, the microinsurance master to come and, um, and guide us through a series of um, questions and points and, and really to think about um, some key issues. Um, today, what we want to talk about is risk management 360 and, um, and to really get a chance to discuss that and, and lay that out for everyone. Thank you so much, Michael, for inviting me and above all for this uh, interesting series you're kicking off. Um, before we get started, um, why is it called 360 degrees perspective? Because after all these years of doing microinsurance, we've recognized very clearly that, um, Bert, we need to look more than just at the insurance part. We need to look at what's going on around, what's happening in the lives of potential clients and clients that makes them um, more at risk, more in need of insurance. And think about ways in which we can start to address those. And so in thinking about these different perspectives, we're trying to look all around and see what we can glean from what we've learned and what we see and from the opinions and ideas of other people to kind of rethink this from a broader perspective. Thanks, Michael. That's really interesting. I like the team of risk management 360. That's something that we don't hear so often in insurance, let alone microinsurance. So can you elaborate a bit more about it? Yeah, Bert. What we look at when we're talking about risk management 360 is we're looking at trying to create an approach to risk management, not just an approach to insurance or microinsurance, but an approach to risk management that provides a holistic solution to the risks faced by clients. If we look on a broad lens and think about what's really going on in the lives of low-income clients, right, we can see there's a need for a number of different solutions, both financial and non-financial, insurance and non-insurance. Um, we need to think about designing what we're calling a risk management blanket for people. Doesn't that make you feel warm? A risk management blanket. <laughs> um, and this primarily helps low-income clients to reduce their risk um, through ex-ante approaches or approaches that they can, they can manage before these risks occur. Um, it also helps them to think about, um, um, to think about retaining risk and their retention mechanisms. Now we've learned in prior research that um, one of the primary mechanisms for low-income people in managing risk is risk retention. Um, they borrow, they sell assets, they do other things that, that create long-term difficulties for them. And we also, of course, want to continue thinking about risk transfer. So what we're really doing is we're, we're doing all this demand research anyway, and we're getting an understanding of what's happening with people, what their issues are, and, um, and what their risks are. And so traditionally, we've looked at the solution as, or a solution as microinsurance. Now we're much more focused on how do we help people to minimize those risks so that the microinsurance, yes, is important but is less important, right? If you think about, if you think about the insurance that we do, right? I mean, we're all trying to develop good products that low-income people can really use that have real value for people. Um, but the reality is that the last thing someone wants is to have their husband die or to have their crops die or to have their children get sick and have to be hospitalized. And so we want to think about how can we help people to mitigate those risks on the front end? And then, yes, there's insurance at the back end. So we always work with insurance also. But looking at insurance at the back end, because these things do happen, how can we reduce them? How can we help mitigate them? Um, 
because again, even if, because even if a low income person has the best insurance that ever was, they don't want these events to occur. So let's help them minimize those events. Let's provide good insurance products to back that up. And the benefit we get overall is that we get a, a stronger, more resilient community, clients. And because we've reduced the risk, we can reduce the premium on the insurance also. So now we've got everything is better. It's a win-win-win across the board for clients and potential clients. Thank you, Michael. Is there any specific reason why you believe Risk Management 360 is relevant for the low income segment? Thanks, Bert. Yeah, Risk Management 360 or RM360 is particularly important for the low income population. Um, for all the reasons that we've worked on microinsurance, um, because we recognize the, that low income people often are, are living on the edge and they don't have the kinds of reserves that others do. And so if we can help them to mitigate those risks, then what happens is that they have, um, they have lesser expenditures, lesser stress within the family, and they still have insurance. So I think for low-income people, this is particularly important that we really look at um, the broad range of issues that they face. So if you think about a couple examples, right? We, um, we all talk about um, telemedicine, for example, right? And telemedicine can theoretically, or according to studies that I've read, can reduce the need for inpatient visits by 70%, according to some studies that I've seen. Um, we're looking at even in livestock, how can we create a system where livestock owners, dairy cow owners, can get access to that kind of medical care, right? Because when low-income milk producers, the, the farmers with the milk cows, um, when they need to contact the veterinarian, the veterinarian needs to come out to their farm and so immediately there's a cost. And so if we could reduce the cost of that visit and incentivize the farmer to call the veterinarian and get information that they need, then this is very positive in terms of the health of the cow. And, we, um, and we've learned from other studies, few studies, because there isn't much of this out there, but we've learned that it's possible to reduce the number of veterinary visits for dairy cows um, if you simply have three pieces of, of information that farmers can readily get. And so, you know, if we can do this, we can save up to 50% of those farm visits. And when there doesn't have to be a cash outlay, then the farmer is more interested in making that call and getting the answers. And so this kind of thing helps them not wait longer. So by the time they call the vet, the cow is about to die. Um, it helps to reduce the risk then, because if we know or are confident that the farmer will call the veterinarian when necessary, we know that then the, the risk will be lowered. We're also looking at how do we create a cheap mechanism for getting um, enhanced feeds for the same cows, right? So not only do we have a mechanism to help them um, if they start to get sick to rapidly assist them, but we also have a mechanism that we're trying to put together that provides them with enhanced feeds so that the cows will be stronger, will be healthier, and will produce more milk. This creates an incentive for the milk processor who processes it into cheese or whatever. Um, and so if you think about just these two components, right now you've got healthcare, you've got improved feed, all of this helps to make that farmer more stable so that the cow is healthy and the, the household is more healthy. And then, of course, there is a mortality policy 
at the end. So if the client, if the cow dies, then the cow will be replaced and the farmer will be able to move forward. So thank you, Michael. How could you visualize this uh, risk management 360 framework? Thanks, Bert. Um, thinking about the, the concept and the framework for risk management 360, we've got, um, got several components that we want to think about, right? In general, one is risk reduction. How do we help people to just reduce the risk that they've got? So we can do this through helping them with um, education and training. We can do this through lots of other interventions, helping to create um, greater health within their family, greater health within their crops and, and livestock, but helping them to reduce the risk. We can also help them to more effectively retain the risk. We know from other research that we've done that people will retain risk even when they have insurance, they'll retain some risk. How can we help them to do that more effectively? And how can we make sure that what we're doing is helping them get away from money lenders with exorbitant interest rates? How can we help them to not have to sell their productive assets so that they don't end up in a deficit going forward? So minimizing the painful, if you will, solutions and the retentions um, so that people can um, more effectively retain that risk. And of course, we still continue with risk transfer and moving the risk right out of the household, the, the community into um, insurance programs. So insurance programs and risk transfer is always a key component. Now the center of all this are clients, of course, and this requires us, this kind of a structure requires us then to be looking more carefully at what clients need. Are they still, um, or are they benefiting from what we are offering them, the, the kinds of RM360 components that they have, but always going back and understanding from clients, what do you need? Is this working? How can we make it better? So it forces us to have a closer relationship to the client. So the Microsoft Center has developed and popularized the concept of Suave, having simple, understood, accessible, valuable, and efficient products. So how does RM360 fit or changes the Suave framework, Michael? Ah, excellent, Bert. Excellent. Suave is the foundation of everything we do. So all the things that we do are, are based off of that. And so what happens with RM360 is that it just gives us a broader means of applying it. So everything still stays with the platform of Suave, Suave, um, and RM360 simply enhances that. It uses that, it looks at it in a broader way, right? So not only are we thinking about how do we make an insurance product simple, how are we making these um, risk management methods simple? How do we make risk reduction simple and understood and accessible and valuable and efficient for low-income people, even before we think about the insurance component? Okay. Interesting, Michael. So let's be a bit more concrete now. How can insurers and practitioners and other stakeholders put this into practice? I think this is really important for us to be thinking about how do we apply RM360 with insurers, with other stakeholders, even government policymakers. How do we think about creating this environment and ecosystem by which people can take advantage and, and get the real um, important benefits of RM360 and not just the insurance? And I think, you know, we know that other entities think of a piece, just like we've always thought about insurance, others think about pieces and these are siloed approaches. And so what we're really trying to do is bring a lot of these silos together so that we look at these issues as a whole in terms of risk management and not just insurance, not just healthcare, not just, um, not just um, funeral benefits or funeral support. And so really thinking about how we can help to bring these pieces together. So 
another thing that RM360 does is it forces us into additional partnerships and additional linkages with other organizations that are providing products or could provide better products. And so that the insurance and these products can be supportive of each other and therefore supportive of the communities in a much more effective way. This has been really informative, Michael. What can we expect in the following episodes? Bert, we're really excited about what's coming up. We've got a number of different uh, speakers to come and talk about um, how they implement Risk Management 360 um, and really some nice discussion and even maybe some debate going back and forth about why this is important and how this happens. And in the way that we always look at things in a practical manner, our intention is to be able to have things that people can get out of each of these um, 360 degree perspectives and be able to apply them in what they do. Bert, now you have 54 microinsurance masters around the globe through this really amazing program that you've, you've been offering for the last three years. Um, how is microinsurance master coping with the virus? And what are your plans for 2021? Where is, where is this amazing program going? Thank you, Michael, for, uh, for your appraisal, but also for the great support that uh, you and your colleagues at the uh, Microinsurance Center at Milliman provide to the program with um, helping our masters to accelerate the activities. We recently had a call with the Microinsurance Master who were with us in March in Johannesburg, um, just before uh, COVID all uh, forces to stay at home. And it's remarkable what they have achieved in these couple of months since they returned, even in the strict uh, circumstances and environments they uh, went back to. Uh, we do hope to return to Pioneer Insurance in the Philippines, a remarkable organization that accomplished um, a lot in microinsurance. And we hope that we can go back to, for a two week immersion to learn how they move the needle in microinsurance and continue to work with our um, um, masters from there uh, in helping them to coach um, uh, in, the, in the way forward when they return back to their offices. Excellent, Bert. It's, it's really super work and it's tremendous to see a training program where people go home and they actually do things and they actually improve and, and they actually implement what you, you've, you've worked with them on. And so it's just really a, a fantastic program. And so Bert, thank you for joining us for our first um, 360 degree perspectives and wish you all the best with Microinsurance Master and everything else. Thank you.